<laughs> Why does Jason Garrett still have a job? Let's talk about it. All right, so check it out. You lose to the Bills at home, short week, Thanksgiving. Jerry's upset. Jerry was upset a week ago. And I will tell you this. I 100% believe that this ownership, this GM, the front office, they are done with Jason Garrett. Done, 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 done. He gets his paychecks. He'll get to be on the sideline these last four weeks. But he is 100% done as the, co- as the coach of the Dallas Cowboys. Now, why not fire him today? Well, apparently... Jerry thinks that keeping Jason Garrett gives them the best chance to have success the rest of the season. We could start there. Why? Like, what about, I loved what uh, my buddy Jesse Holly was saying on Twitter. Everybody says, oh, they didn't quit. They didn't quit. They didn't quit. They haven't quit on Garrett. They haven't quit on Garrett. Because on Sunday, they try hard. Because when it's time to play the game, they tried. If your team regularly doesn't, execute as Jason Garrett likes to talk about all oh, its execution, all oh, our left guard on this play didn't do this. And this guy didn't do this. And this guy didn't do this. And this guy didn't do this. And you know, if those guys would just all do exactly what they were taught to do, then we'd win all the football games. Oh my goodness. It'd be so great. We didn't execute. We just didn't execute. That's preparation. And it's your job. The head coach's job is to prepare you for Sunday. And on Sunday, you, the totality of the work that you've put in is going to show up. So when your guys are the ones that come up short on Sunday, That's on you, man. That's preparation. And, hey, maybe it's not your fault. Maybe it's just, hey, you've been here a long time, 10 years, and sometimes messages get old and you got to move on. And they do have to move on from Jason Garrett. The good news is everybody in that front office, everybody in that entire place knows that they have to move on. So the only issue now is, well, if you were so mad a week ago and then you went out and got stomped by Buffalo, why didn't you make the move? Jerry was emotional after the game, a little tears, some smiles, some, oh, I love me some Garrett, and he's the guy. If anybody's the guy, he's the guy. Why didn't you make the move? Well, I think we know. Because this is from the great Brian Broaddus, and when the great Brian Broaddus speaks, Cowboys Nation, you would be wise to listen. And what Broaddus is telling us is that Jerry probably just wants a smooth transition to a big name head coach. So Jerry may have a master plan. He's got a plan in mind. He's got a big name out there that he's got his eye on, or maybe a couple of them. And you don't want to muddy the waters by having an interim guy for a few weeks. And now my interim guy, if he didn't do well, what does that mean? If he did do well, what does that mean? And I want to be able to kind of have a clean break here. I didn't have to fire Garrett. His contract ran out. And then I just move on to my next head coach and everything is smooth. And that's, You know, that's what Jerry is thinking right now, is that I can just get through this, wait it out, and then I can bring in my next head coach and it's all going to be good. But let's talk about the flawed logic and all that. So, let's say, I'm just going to pick who I think would be your interim head coach, right? I'll guess Chris Richard, right? Younger guy. Seems like he's got some fire, could relate to the younger players, maybe a good motivator, all these different things. So the downside, and also let me paint up this big picture, because just from reading Broadus's Twitter account, it must follow, by the way, my gut would be maybe Jerry is thinking Sean Payton. Yeah, he's got a contract. I think he just got an extension. But coaches can be traded, and Jerry will do what it takes to make the right splash. Jerry's down for splashes. He's down to get the right guy in here. So let's just say it could be Mike Zimmer. Mike Zimmer's contract's going to be up. Maybe it's Mike Zimmer. Uh, maybe it is Lincoln Riley. Whatever. But if you want to do that, today your plan is, I want to get whoever in the offseason. That's my plan. All right. Garrett, you're fired. Chris Richard, you're the interim head coach. What are the ways that goes? It goes one of two ways, right? You missed the playoffs, and Chris Richard didn't do a great job as the interim coach, or at least that's the perception and he goes back to his job after you hire a new head coach, right? I mean, all the assistants, in theory, are going to serve at the discretion of the next head coach anyway. 
But, okay, Richard doesn't do well, and it's like, well, that didn't work. Missed the playoffs, whatever. Uh, all right, enjoy running your defense. Or it goes well. Maybe it goes really well. They do get going. They do wake up. They make the postseason. Maybe they even make a little run, and Chris Richard is at the helm. I guess, in theory, Jerry's fear there is, well, pff, I had a plan to go get this new shiny toy that I was going to get, and now we screwed it up because Chris Richard did so well, and now maybe i got to hire him for the job, or maybe somebody's going to hire him away from me if I don't give him the job. And this, God forbid you have multiple good head coaching candidates. Oh, my God, we found a guy who might be able to do the job. How awful is this? It doesn't matter which way it goes with an interim head coach. If it goes poorly, he goes back to his job. If you and the new coach want him to, if it goes great, you either give him a job or you ask him to go back to his old one or somebody else picks him up and your brand new shiny head coach who comes in hires his own defensive coordinator. There's not a downside. What's happening is Jerry's friendship with Garrett is blurring the lines. And so he's trying to just get to the finish line four more weeks. They'll get beaten the first playoff game because they still can't beat a winning team. They'll lose that game. And then Jerry will start out on his journey to go find the new Cowboys head coach, which because I know Brian brought us and I know how plugged in he is and how he's the most important Cowboy follow out there. I believe that he's got his eye on a really big fish. And then he'll probably end up snagging a really big fish. So the Garrett thing is over. But their logic for keeping him for the last four weeks, it's absurd. There's there's not a reason for this. He's not the most likely to make this thing. The, the wheels don't fall off this thing if Jason Garrett's not coaching anymore. That's evidenced by the fact that you don't execute on Sundays. And then you say that you don't execute, but you never go further than that. Because the further than that is, okay, watch the tape. You watch the tape. Okay, it's true. They're not executing. Who's not executing? Every player on the field at different times during the game. So, one, maybe you're not as good as we thought. And that's probably true. They're probably not as good as we thought. But are they better than the New York Jets, even without their starting tackles and their receiver? Of course they are. So what's happening is your players aren't playing up to their potential, and that's your answer. We're not playing up to our potential. That's your job, is to get the potential out of them. So you're gone. Next guy up. And now check this out. We've also clarified roles. Because right now what you have, and this is because of Jerry, is a head coach who used to be the OC, who the last head coach didn't get to pick his OC because you had already picked this OC and said, hey, you have to work with him, and he's going to take your job one day. And you've already done that again because you elevated Kellen Moore, Jerry. You got rid of Scott Linehan. Garrett didn't want to get rid of Linehan. Garrett didn't want Kellen Moore promoted. So now you get the same thing going on where it's like, okay, I'm the OC, but the head coach has an offensive background, and he is my boss, so what does he want to do? What does he want? You got two defensive coordinators. The one that's named the defensive coordinator isn't the one that's the defensive coordinator. He's not the one calling the plays. So all we're doing is straightening up our leadership here a little bit. Now, Kellen's offense. Richard and Marinelli are still running the defense, but Richard, now you're the top voice, somebody who's – a new voice, a fresh voice, energetic voice, a fun voice. We've helped out here. And you're pretending that that's going to make this team fall apart? Getting rid of one cog in a machine that was built wrong? Come on, man. Come on. Oh, and one other thing. You know why Michael Bennett was the one that was yelling in the locker room after the game? This is just a theory. The reason Michael Bennett is the one that was really upset and yelling about accountability and how this isn't good enough is because he's seen better. He's been in Seattle. He's been in New England. He's seen what it looks like Monday through Friday to prepare to go win a football game, and he's saying, what you do here, this ain't it. DeMarcus Ware said it when he left. He got to Denver, and he was like, ooh, that was different. This ain't it. What you got, it ain't it. And you got to change it. Jerry's going to hold on for four more weeks. The good news is, that I do think he's going to land a big fish. Now, if it's Sean Payton, it's going to cost you draft picks, and it would require Sean going to New Orleans, going to Mickey and saying, hey, I want out, I really want to go there, and then Mickey would have to be uh, okay with that, and he'd be like, well, I want you to be happy, so let me make sure we get something good enough in return, or whatever. Uh, But, yeah, the Cowboys, they're done with Garrett. They're going to hang on for four more weeks, so he wasn't fired. His contract just ran out, and those are the reasons that they shouldn't. Those are the reasons that they're wrong, and I'll catch you guys on the radio. Maybe I'll be on this weekend. We'll see. But subscribe to the YouTube channel. You, the what? Subscribe to the YouTube channel. Jeff Cavanaugh. YouTube.com slash Jeff Cavanaugh. Love you guys.